together a lot. He said, uh, Minnie, I saw the light. <laughs> and he wrote that song that I saw the light. <laughs> All right. Here's one Johnny Russell used to do. Hey, hey uh, behave yourself now, Billy Joe. Don't act like a hillbilly. Act like a normal person. Uh, we got you on the Facebook now. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to change my up. <laughs> I give, wait a minute, wait a minute, I, I, I give up, I got the wrong key, I give up, I give in, this time I quit, I reach the end, I've tried and I've tried, I never win, yeah. I give up from now on, dear God, it's all in your hand. I tried for so long, all by myself, Lord, but my will is gone, and I need your help, Lord. I'm down on my knees, my head is bowed, Lord, hear me. All I need you now I give up Amen. I give in Yes This time I quit Come on I just can't win I've tried and I've tried But I never win I give up Dear God it's all in your hands I promise I'll try, I'll do my best, Lord, but I'm afraid I can't fly, but I'll take the test, Lord, you know what I need, to help me to stand, Jesus I crawl, far as I can, I give up, yes. I give in. Amen. This time I quit. I reach the end. I've tried and I've tried, but I never win. I give up from now on, dear God. It's all in your hands. I give up from now on, dear God. It's all in your hands. Hey man, give him a good hand. Praise the Lord. Have you ever tried the violin? That is good. Huh? Have you ever tried the violin? Yeah, when I want to empty the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that bad, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you one thing we ain't going to have him do is play the harmonica. Oh, okay. my harmonica? Yeah, I'll get that. Everything he plays on the harmonica sounds the same. He walked up to my front porch with a Bible in his hand and I could tell by the way he looked he was an old time preacher man 
He asked, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. I'd like to talk to you, he said, about a friend of mine. He was an old time preacher man. He came to me that day with his Bible in his hand. He taught me how to pray. He taught me how to pray. He opened up his Bible as he read to me how Jesus died on the cross, the cross of Calvary. Do you believe that Jesus died on that cross for you? Well, if you do, then trust him now and he will save you too. He was an old time preacher man came to me that day with his Bible in his hand. He taught me how to pray, taught me how to pray. He was an old time preacher man, and he came to me that day with his Bible in his hand. He taught me how to pray, taught me how to pray. Yes, he taught me how to pray. Was an old time preacher, man. There he is, Brother Barber. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Brother. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never gone before. No sad goodbyes will there be spoken for time won't matter anymore. Feel a land I'm longing for you and someday on the I'll stand there my Thank you, Billy Joe. Thank you. Give him a good hand. Thank you so much. Boy, it's a blessing. Have a time he comes. And we're glad that he was able to uh, be out here with our Facebook Facebook audience also. Ephesians chapter 2. You can hear me good on uh, the Facebook because his phone is right here, but uh, bring me that microphone over here so the people in the congregation can can hear me too. I heard it all. So it That's okay. I'll get it back on. Thanks, Billy Joe. What a blessing he is. He adds so much to our service and my dear friend for uh, many years now, and and uh, he loves the rescue mission. He borrowed me for two and a half years. Now I can't get used to being away from here. So I borrowed him. I had a. <laughs> I just come on back to stay. Like, like I, with me now. Yeah, he, uh, I'm eight years we, old. we had some trouble when I first took over at, as pastor. There were some difficulties, uh, 
uh, in the church and I needed help. I just, uh, as I, when I took over the congregation, it was very small. It's not big now, actually, and, but um, uh, I needed help and I needed leadership. And so I went and asked my good preacher friend, uh, Pastor Johnny Pruitt, who's my best preacher friend in town. I said, uh, I need to borrow Billy Joe. Uh, for a while, I need a deacon and someone leads singing and stuff for a while. I've taken over this a little bitty church, a big, big building, but a little bitty church. And and uh, he said, how long are you going to need him? I said, about two years probably. <laughs> and that's what I did. I kept it for two years. Did you ever hear anybody borrowing a church member? <laughs> and he's been a blessing. He's been my friend now for all these years. Good to have you. Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, turn to it. We read through the Bible in a year. Uh, actually, uh, Galatians 6 is, uh, is the chapter for today, and then we're in Isaiah in the Old Testament. But turn to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to read it here, and then I'm going to preach on it. It's a great uh, chapter about the old life and the new life, Ephesians 2. Uh, in our Pew Bibles, church, uh, what page is it on? 1258. 1258. We use the King James Bible in our church. You say, why do you use the King James Bible in your church? Because we believe it's the Word of God in the English language. So uh, that ought to help you out of why we use it. Let's stand, please, in uh, respect to the Word of God. Someone said, I don't, uh, I don't believe in standing, uh, reading the <laughs> Word of God. Well, then sit down. But you're going to stand if you come here. I tell them here, sometimes they come in and... Uh, I make them stand. I says, we don't read the word of God that long, but if you walked in this door, you can stand. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, look, look at my Facebook, what I said yesterday uh, about these anti-American people that won't stand in honor to our flag uh, and our national anthem. They're just anti they're anti-American. That's what they are. Don't tell me. They say, well, we're protesting this and that. Well, do that on your own. You millionaire uh, football players, if you want to protest something, buy some time on television and protest anything you want. But don't you sit down during the uh, during the national anthem uh, and when we're in and, and, and when we're dishonoring uh, our nation. I wish I wish they'd tell all of those uh, them ones that were over in England and uh, they sat down during our national anthem and and. Uh, uh, during the British uh, anthem, they stood up. They ought to deport every one of them. Let them go over there to Britain. Go wherever they want. Go to North Korea. Amen. Go to Iran. Amen. Um, anyway, I had a lot to say about that yesterday uh, in my preaching. I preached a lot, too. It went a little bit longer. But look it up. It's on the Facebook. You can get yes, yesterday mornings. I, I let it rip on that yesterday. Let's read the Word of God. Like my wife says, let's get to the Bible. Quit telling your stories. All right, here we go. I'll read verse 1, we'll read 2 together, and so on down through Ephesians 2. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also ye all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel 
and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, uh, ye, who, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Amen. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of com commandments contained in ordinances, for to make himself of twain, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, uh, fitly framed together, groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the spirit let us pray lord thank you for this marvelous chapter praise god for second <clears throat> chapter of book of ephesians bless it to our hearts now in jesus name amen and you may be seated we have a wonderful guest on here today uh my dear precious wonderful granddaughter jesse she's on here from uh the milwaukee area isn't that wonderful people can uh, get onto this Facebook, and all I have to do is hit uh, go live, and then talk, and it's on there. And and I welcome Jesse. I love you, sweetheart, and she's precious, as all my grandchildren are. And I'm glad she's on here. I hope I'm do okay, Jesse. You let me know, okay? She's a. I tell you what, she's a doctor. She just graduated uh, uh, from college. It, uh, she's a uh, she's a doctor, but it's not called a doctor. Uh, uh, she's, uh, uh, I'm trying to get the right name for it now, but it's, uh, I guess it's called a nurse practitioner. They do everything a doctor does. They can, they, I've got one, my, my doctor Bernardo, he's got a nurse practitioner. She works with him and, uh, and I, I feel just as comfortable going to her as I do to the doctor. She knows all about it and prescribe it anyway. Jesse, good to have you with us. I love you, sweetheart. Let's go on now, Ephesians chapter two. And you hath he quickened. Uh, who were dead in trespasses and sins. You hath he quickened who were dead. Quicken. Man, I don't know about you, but uh, something happened to me when I got saved. I was quickened. The old things were passed away and all things became new. I, you're, you're suspect if you become a church member because your mom or daddy were in church or or you join a certain church, or this or that, or another thing, and it's just a little ritual, and it's a Sunday morning thing you go through and all that. The only one I can talk for is myself. I was quickened. Amen. The Holy Ghost uh, got a hold, like Billy Joe sings. Something got a hold. Sing a verse of that. Sing a little bit. The first I heard all the people claim, old time religion was real. I said, I'll go down and take a look at the crowd. They're just weak-minded, I feel. But something got a hold of me. Amen. Oh something got a hold of me. I went there for spite, but oh my, that night, God certainly got a hold of me. Amen. And something got a hold of me. I can't speak for you, but something got a hold of me. Verse 2, it says, Where and in times past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's a nice sound the name is, but ain't nothing but the old smutty-faced devil. You know that? Prince of the power of the air. He's the one wandering up and down at, uh, um, the uh, street up uh, Bridgewood Avenue out here, Highway 1. That very, used to be the only corridor you had to go to South Florida on Highway 1. All these old motels used to be. That's where you used to stay. If you're going to go to uh, Miami, uh, you had to go down Highway 1, stop there, and uh, uh, Victor was over here yesterday. He comes often. He'd been saved eight years ago, 
he owns a couple of motels across the street here on, on Highway 1, and, and the devil's running all up and down on Highway 1, isn't he? He's over there, and, and Charlie, he's down there on the corner on, down there. On the, what's the name of that little joint you go to over there? Uh, Chick, what's it called? That's where he's the worst, is at North Street. Two Who did, Charlie? The devil? Oh yeah, the devil's still down there on North Street, but uh, but uh, in it, but that's the red zone from uh, um, from Mason to Fairview on on uh, Ridgewood. That's the red zone. Stay out of there. So anyway, when in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, lost people, among whom. Also, we all had our conversation in times past. You see, everybody was lost before they were saved. There ain't nobody born saved. I sometimes ask people, uh, are you going to heaven when you die? Are you sure you're going to? Yeah. Well, when were you saved? I've always been saved. No, oh, that ain't heaven. It tells here in Ephesians 2 about the old and the last, so, uh, uh, the old life and the new life. So everybody was at one time, we were lost. And 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 then, and then they uh, uh, we were saved. I'm glad I, I didn't get saved when I was a child. I wish I would have. I could have. My mom and daddy were Christians, missionaries, and I didn't get saved till I was 29 years old. But the best salvation is of a youth, and then grow, not getting into all that sin and wickedness. Uh, I mean, everybody's saved as a lost sinner, of course. But better to get saved. A lot, a lot of people get. A lot of kids that when they got saved when they were kids, they said, "Well, I feel so bad to hear them around the rescue." And I ain't got no testimony like at the rescue mission. They were drunkards and dopers and in jail and all this and that. I says, "Daddy, you got a better testimony than them. If you never drank and never smoked and and never ran around, and uh, that's the best testimony uh, coming out of wickedness." Uh, uh, in fact, I, I tell a lot of people when they get saved, it's best not to brag around what you used to be so much. I used to. We had my my good friend Harry Salnier. Uh, who ran the Pacific Garden Mission for so many years and, and started the Unshackled program that many of you have watched. Uh, for 50, started in 1950. It's that old. And uh, he, he had that uh, 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 program, Unshackled, and you have a half-hour program of someone's life. Uh, guys that got saved at the mission and that, I told him, I says, uh, Harry would always call me, give me a story, give me a story. People, I, I didn't recommend them to, to do that. I've never. He asked me, "Do years?" I said, "I don't want to do that." Uh, I don't know about you. Maybe you. I don't like glorify the old sinful life. Uh, and, and I don't. And I don't. I don't like that. Uh, that's the old life. So it says, uh, "Among whom also you also had your conversation." Conversation means more than speech. It's your way of life. In times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature the children of wrath. By nature, that means you're born a sinner. You're born wrong. You, uh, some say that, well, that person, well, they're a good person. The Bible says there's none good, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So get get over this. If you're here uh, sitting in church today and you think you're good, you're not. If you're out there in the Facebook audience, you think you're good, you're not. The Bible says, the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? You say, well, how dare you say that about me? I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Watch out. By nature, children of wrath, even as others. Everybody the same, lost. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, amen, wherewith he loved us. The most famous verse in the Bible, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. Billy Joe, the lady come in here today. I don't know. She's, she's new to us, but she was just getting in with it, with your songs and that. And, uh, and she was just happy in the Lord. I could tell my, my, that, that, that lady knows the Lord. She just come in here and, and she, and that now when I'm talking about salvation, she just smiling from ear to ear. Amen. And she's got, she's got what I call the Holy glow. Amen. Something got a hold of me. In her life, I don't know. I don't even know her name. She wrote her name down when she came in, but but something got something got a hold of her. Something got a hold of you, ma'am, and and I can tell it by your countenance, and I can tell it by your reaction to what we're talking about 
the old and the new. Glory to God. Amen. You need to get it today. If you haven't got it, there's some of you that aren't saved in church today because you've told me you're on. Some of you out on Facebook need to get saved too. But God who is rich in mercy, a great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, everybody dead in sins, hath quickened us together <clears throat> with Christ. By grace are you saved. You know what grace is? Unmerited favor. None you can do for it. <clears throat> By grace are you saved. That in the ages uh, to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Look at verse 8. Great verse. You ought to memorize it if you haven't. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, that I, I memorized those two verses very early in my Christian experience, 58 years and, and three months ago, and uh, going to be four months, come up on the fourth of uh, this next month. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So you see, Works doesn't save you. Grace saves you. But we're, we're saved unto what? Unto good works. I can tell if you're saved. You say, how can... The only way I can tell if you're saved is by the way you act and by the way... Not what you say. A lot of people tell me they're saved. They come in and re been doing that for all these years back in Milwaukee and over here. People tell me they're saved and uh, they live like the devil. You know what I say? Uh, don't come around. I'm not going to sign no affidavit for you. I don't believe you're saved. Well, how dare you say you don't think I'm saved, Pastor, because you live like the devil. You shack up and lie and steal and get drunk and take dope and on and on, and you and you do everything that the devil, uh, uh, I think you have your daddy the devil. Well, I don't like that. Well, uh, I don't like you preaching. Well, God don't like the way you live, and I don't either. It's supposed to be an old life and a new life. Amen. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. How are you doing, church folks? There's some of you in here. Some of you were drunk yesterday. Yeah. And some of y'all that are sitting in here today, you shacked up last night. God help you. That's the devil's. Well, we're on Facebook here. I don't know if we want to be distinguished. Here's a guy. He stayed at the Milwaukee Rescue Mission. He just came here and buried his daddy here a few months ago. But go ahead. What are you going to say? Say. Oh, don't worry about Oh, don't worry about Victor. Victor's a good man. And you need to pay your rent. You see, people come in there all the time cry to me about Victor because he won't let him stay over there free. He's got to pay the light bill and he's got to pay his taxes. So don't don't cry to me that Victor won't let you stay for nothing. I don't blame him for not letting you stay for nothing. So don't tell me about Victor. Victor, oh, I don't want to. Don't, if you just go in the bathroom, if you, I tell you you want to say something to glorify God. You don't glorify God. Just be quiet. Let's go on here. It says, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace he are saved and hath raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Woo I'm sitting in heavenly places. I'm old, but I'm in heavenly places. I'll tell you what. Uh, I might be old, but but, but you're not going to find anybody got more joy than I do. I'm not going to mope around like some of these old folks. Well, well, it's me. I got sore knees. I do too. Yeah. I can't hardly get up and down the steps. I can't either. I forget things. I forget more than you do. <laughs> but I have the joy. I, I love that song that, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of his name. He was a song leader and a songwriter. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Isn't that nice? And he is. And I got joy and I got peace and I got comfort through the blessed Holy Ghost, the comforter. Uh, 
that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. I love grace. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Pastor Bubar, he came back out of, he ran a, a worldwide organization. And um, the, the, the doctor told him he had terminal cancer. He's going to die in four years. And he quit that great leadership, and he took a little local church uh, in Germantown, Wisconsin, just a suburb of Milwaukee there. And I had the privilege of meeting him. He taught me about soul winning, Pastor Bubar. And that was his favorite song. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Oh, what a wonderful song. Grace, grace, God's grace. It's all about grace, we're saved. It's not of man, it's all of God. How wonderful it is. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not that of yourself, it's the gift of God. Verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, they weren't Jews. They were any, Anybody that wasn't a Jew was a Gentile. Sometimes they call them heathens. Gentile sounds better than heathen, doesn't it? <laughs> they call me a Gentile instead of a heathen. Uh, by which uh, is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Verse 12. But at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, because you see, uh, not all Jews are saved, but salvation is of the Jews. You have to understand that. Salvation is of the Jews. And strangers from the covenants of promise, the promise of eternal life through the Savior, which the Jews as a people don't recognize that yet. Uh, having no hope and without God in the world. Lost, lost people. Most people are lost today. Few saved, most lost. But now in Christ Jesus... Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, yeah, the blood of Christ. You watch out for these bloodless preachers. You watch out for the John MacArthur's who pulled the blood out of all their hymnals and, and uh, his uh, made the statement that the blood of Christ is at the foot of the cross and he de-emphasizes the blood. And um, you see, John MacArthur's a great preacher. He even wrote a study Bible. I wouldn't follow it. New King James, which, by the way, you say, well, the New King, King James, that's better than uh, uh, Old King. No, it ain't. It's got over 5,000 changes in it. And most of them tend towards the Horton Westcott text. If you haven't studied anything about Bibles, you won't know what I'm talking about. Horton Westcott were two Cambridge scholars in the middle of the 1800s that changed the whole interpretation of Bibles with the Horton Westcott text. And the granddaddy of all that uh, is the Vatican manuscript. And the Vatican manuscript is held in Rome. And the Catholics will take you to hell by this new pope. Uh, 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 he might be the Antichrist. Ah, I mean, they got, they got a bunch. You know, there's a bunch of big shot. He ain't even a Catholic. You know, there's a bunch of big shot Catholics that, that brought letters against him, which, which he won't... Uh, he won't answer. He said in May of this year, the the, the, the Pope. Now they had a they had a Pope that resigned. Look that up. I uh, looked that up on uh, on YouTube. That last Pope that resigned. You know why he resigned? Is because all that mess with the queers there in the Vatican. That's why he re, that's why he resigned. Because they got, uh, it, it's it's not only you ain't uh, uh, you ain't seen the you ain't seen the tip of the iceberg in Roman Catholicism with this homosexual stuff. I mean, it goes up to the top of the heap there in the Vatican. And, and he was, uh, in, uh, and they had this certain order. Uh, I forget what the name, you look it up, put it up on, uh, they got about an hour and a half thing on there in this certain order. And, and this guy that, um, I mean, they got some, they got some real perverts and have had for years in the Roman Catholic Church up into the way up hierarchy of the church. And this last pope resigned because all that mess of homosexuality. That's why he pulled out. And this news guy, he don't believe nothing. Now, he said in May, he said, you don't have to be a Christian to go to heaven. The only thing you have to go to heaven. He said this in May. It's a quote from him in one of his homilies, little talks he gave. And uh, 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 he said that the only thing you have to do, uh, do to go to heaven is be a good person and have a clear conscience. <laughs> be a good person. By the way, the Bible says there's none good, no, not wrong. Wrong, Pope. Ain't no hope in the Pope. Yeah. 
don't send me no letters, Catholics. That's okay. You need to get saved and turn your back on that heresy and uh, and Pope and uh, and believe like uh, uh, like Luther did and Swingley and on and on and all those reformers. By the way, uh, uh, you say, uh, do you think them Protestants did a good job? I think Protestants did a good job, but you know what? I ain't a Protestant. I'm a Baptist. You know, there's always been Baptists. There ain't always been Protestants. The Protestants come out of Catholic. There's always been the true church. It wasn't always called Baptist. It didn't always call Baptist today. It could be a Bible church. Could be a, could be could be a lot of things. But there's always been God church. It's always been right down through the ages, and it didn't come out of the Catholic church. Never was true. It's always been wrong, and so you can't take you can't get right out of wrong. You understand what I'm saying? God bless. You. I know a lot of Reformed people, and people that uh, come out of uh, that follow the teachings of the reformers, uh, but I'm not of the reform movement, and uh, and I'm a Baptist. We call ourselves Baptist. But I'm a Bible believer, and they've always been down through the ages. And uh, I don't know how I got on the Pope, but there ain't no hope in the Pope. Look them up on the internet; they got the goods on them. You don't even believe you have to. You don't have. You don't have to be a Christian. Not only you don't have to be a news teacher, you have to be a Catholic. Now you don't even have to be a Christian. Go to, he. Uh, he's a good candidate for Antichrist, the, Pope, the current Pope, for sure. Uh, that in the time uh, you're without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the uh, co covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. A lot of good verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. That's where we stop. For he is our peace, amen, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Ah, peace through the blood of Christ. Isn't that wonderful? And that he might uh, reconcile both unto God, one body at the cross. That means Jews and Gentiles, uh, can be saved the same way through the uh, blood of Christ, slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, that's the Gentiles, and to them that were nigh, that's the Jews. So Jews and Gentiles get saved the same way, believing in Christ. Believe on Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Uh, for through him we both have access in, by one Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, third person of the Trinity, unto the Father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. You see? Who was it? I think Bill was telling me we were picking up today um, about a foundation. You've got to have a foundation. You've got to have a foundation to build a house. You've got to have a foundation to build a church. Uh, it has to be built on the Bible. And, uh, and, and, and you've got to have a foundation to be saved and live a Christian life. And that foundation is Christ. He's the cornerstone. Yeah. Catholics say that, that Peter, uh, Peter's just a little pebble like you and I. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. That's what it says right here, cornerstone. And you better build your life on Christ alone, not on the Catholic Church or the Baptist Church or any other church. Because anything else is sand. The cornerstone is Jesus Christ, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. Verse 22, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. What a wonderful chapter, chapter 2. Read it over and meditate upon it and look at it. We're about through. Thank you for viewing on Facebook, church. I know a few in the church here today are not saved. I wish you get saved today. Why don't you make it your day of salvation? Everybody has to have a getting saved day. You got to be born again. Jesus said to be born again. Out there on Facebook, maybe you've never been born again. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I can't make you saved. I can't save you. But I can tell you the way. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you repent and turn to him, you can be saved. Go and pray the sinner's prayer.
Anybody that's not saved, then the Holy Spirit speaking into your heart. Why don't you pray and get saved today? This is a sinner's prayer. Pray it if you're not saved. You don't know you're saved. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. I put my trust in you, Lord Jesus, and receive you as my Savior and my only hope of going to heaven. Thank you for saving me right now. Amen. Here in the church, our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Anybody here, I know several of you, you've been, you haven't been saved, but you come to church and did you pray the prayer today and get saved? Did you, did you, did you really ask Joe, Lord, if you got saved today and asked the Lord to save you, you slip your hand up. Let me see your hand. Anybody here today in the church? Yes. 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 All right. How about out there on Facebook? I don't know. Only you know if you meant, but you got to have a time when you, you must be born again. You got to have a new birth time where old things pass away. And I hope you've done it out there. Let us know. Any help we can be, let us know. God bless you. We're so glad you tuned in. We're going to sign off now and we'll talk to you tomorrow.